Hey everyone, I am Michael. This is a review for Sammy Keys number seven, Sammy Keys and the Search for Snake Eyes. This was an okay book. It, it's not my personal favorite because it's really dark and serious. Uh, the cover, this is a good cover. I like this cover illustration. There's a cartoon cover with, with, with a cute snake and it's wearing glasses to emphasize its eyes. Because snake eyes, right? This is a book about catching a snake. It's like, no, no, this is a more accurate representation of the book. It's about a, a murderer, kidnapper. Yeah, actually murderer. Snake eyes is a murderer. Um, in this particular case, the victim is a, a kidnapping. He's kidnapping his ex-girlfriend because she had a baby with somebody else. Uh, a guy named Joey. He already killed Joey and framed his ex-girlfriend for it, but that's not enough. He's got to kidnap her and uh, hold her hostage in his basement until she dies. And that's the story. It's really dark and scary. And, and Sammy, man, it, there are so many places where Sammy should have left the story. Just she makes really bad decisions and she keeps going deeper and deeper into the case even though she knows it's too dangerous and she should step out because she's dealing with murderers. She's dealing with gangsters. Really the part that she should have stepped out on, like the most, I think, is uh, when she's almost kidnapped. So um, Sammy is not kidnapped. They kidnapped the wrong person, but that she is kidnapped as a warning to get out of town right away or else Snake Eyes is going to murder you. And Sammy's response to that is like, I'm 13. I can't, I can't escape town like that. Are you crazy? But that is 100% the point where Sammy should have gone to the police and just given up the case. She should have just gone home and stopped investigating entirely, let the police handle it. Instead, no, she has to run away and chase after some girls who she knows is part of the gang and she has to follow them. And um, sure, she ends up finding Snake Eyes' hideout, but she she ends up getting captured. She and Marissa both get captured and locked in the basement with Lena. And um, Snake Eyes brings a 10-year-old to kill them. He's like, hey, 10-year-old, you want to be part of our gang? You have to shoot these, shoot these girls, and then you'll be in the gang. Fortunately, Sammy is smart. And this was kind of unrealistic, though. I, I do like when they have the smart endings for... Sammy thinks of a clever way to escape the situation. And this is a classic detective setup. We're in a locked room. How are you going to escape? We've got a bunch of items. It's like an adventure game, really. It's like, okay, well, here's a water heater, and here's a wheelbarrow, and here's some duct tape, and here's a brick which is almost broken in half, and we've got part of a hose. How do you put those together in order to escape? Well, she ties the hose, she connects the hose to the water heater, and turns it on really, really high in order to create just scalding water, um, using the duct tape as sort of a nozzle on the end, and sprays it all over the bad guys, and she humiliates Snake Eyes by sticking him in the wheelbarrow. They have to use the wheelbarrow to turn the, turn the handle on the uh, water heater, and they humiliate him with concrete and, and pouring concrete inside the wheelbarrow. And so his butt is stuck there. And now he's publicly humiliated because the police drag him out of his house onto the street. And everybody sees him get get removed. And so now he's no longer going to be going to have a reputation as this tough, scary gangster, meaning he has no power and he won't be able to haunt Lena from jail or when he gets out of jail because he's already been in jail before. So... Yeah, that's the ending. Really dark and, and, and serious stuff. Um, I'd have to reread the other books, but that might be the closest Sammy's come to, like, actual death. Because I, I remember, like, book one or two where the bad guy's chasing after her, but it's not like the bad guy is here with a gun ordering people to shoot her. I, I mean, that was just her hiding in the dumpster. Danger was implied, but not direct murder. Yeah, gosh, wow. So, 
uh, th that was the, like the final third of the book. It was really dark and serious. And then there were plenty of points building up to that ending um, where Sammy should have stepped back. Like she talks to these girls who she knows are gangsters and they are very hostile. And instead of backing away during the conversation, she just keeps going. And then she goes to the high school to research these girls to know who they are. And then she starts like calling in the phone book to try to call all of the various, uh, try to find uh, the mother of the baby, Lena, the one who's been kidnapped. And she goes to Lena's house and she meets Lena's sister. And a really dark and serious scene too, where Lena's sister's like, yeah, I like to hide outside whenever dad gets drunk. Um, it Usually he'll pass out in an hour or so, and then it's safe for me to come back in the house. Mom usually passes out too, because she doesn't want to get beaten. And it's like, what? Ah. This, is this a middle school book? Or is this a middle school series anymore? It sounds like it might be a, a teenager series. Um, young adult, I, yeah, gosh, it, this is not kid stuff. Well, I did like the first third of the book a lot, though. I, I, I really like the first third. The first third is that a baby, um, Sammy's just at the mall when Lena comes up to her and she's like, oh my gosh, he's gonna kill me, he's gonna kill me. Here, you take this bag, I'll be back at seven, I can't stay here. And she runs away and Sammy gets a glimpse of Snake Eyes, who, who's got eyes of steel and a face of death, as Sammy repeats multiple times. And it turns out that the bag has a baby, and this is way better than, say, Babysitter's Club mystery number whatever. Abby and the Mystery Baby. That book was kind of terrible. Okay, that was a terrible book. This was a much more interesting version of the mystery where, um, you know, Sammy finds a baby and she's got to take care of the baby and figure out who the baby's mother is. And yeah, like I said, she just should have stopped when she figured out who the baby's mother is and then let the police handle it from there. She does take the baby to the police eventually. Uh, Officer Borsch was interesting in this book. He talks to her a lot. He actually deciphers um, gang signs, which ends up being very helpful. You know, like graffiti. He, he teaches her how to decode graffiti. And that, that, that comes in handy trying to figure out, trying to find the gang. Uh, because Snake Eyes and Lena were both members of the same gang. Uh, I didn't like the one, a couple of jokes with the baby I didn't like. They, they do the joke where the baby pees on her. And I, I see that a lot in like sitcoms or uh, movies where somebody's unexpectedly dealing with a baby and they have no idea what to do. And it always ends up being a baby pees on them joke. And I, I, that's kind of gross. I don't like the toilet humor. But uh, the rest of it was pretty funny where Sammy has a baby and she has no idea what to do because she's never even touched a baby before. And she kind of goes home and I hate to say it, Grams was not very good in this book. Instead of helping Sammy with the baby, Grams sort of goes to sleep and lets Sammy take care of the baby all night, even though they don't have enough diapers for the baby. The diapers ran out. Diapers ran out pretty quickly. And yeah, Grams, you really should have helped. Grams is sort of distracted by the fact that they've got a new next door neighbor. Next door neighbor starts blackmailing them over Sammy. Yeah, so Grams doesn't like that. But this book really kind of, the, the Graham, the real Grams storyline is that Grams isn't sure if she can trust Sammy anymore. And she's got a point because Sammy's a big fat liar. <laughs> Sammy lies a lot. And Sammy goes into dangerous situations a lot. And honestly, Grams doesn't have a job. So, I mean, I think Grams should pick Sammy up from school every single day. I, I think that's what Sammy, I think that might be necessary because Sammy keeps running away from school to chase after gangsters and do dangerous things like that. Uh, yeah. Oh man, I'm already about nine minutes into this review. So the other major storyline was one I really, uh, I, I'm gonna say I really liked it, but I thought it was interesting and engaging. It's another softball storyline where the, it, it's the championships and Heather's trying to worm her way onto the team with the help of Coach Vince, because Coach Vince is mad that he, that his team isn't the one playing in the playoffs. <laughs> so Heather, is a big suck up and she works her way on the team. And then she does a thing where she pretends to be nice to Sammy all the time. And then as soon as the, the adults backs are turned, she just dumps like paint all over Sammy's hands and uh, feet. Yeah, what a meanie. And 
It turns out that's part of a larger plan. The, the next day, uh, I mean, Sammy's already got green paint on her hand, so Heather uses screen spray paint and spray paints the, uh, the opposing team's school and writes Sammy's name to it. And nobody believes Sammy. Everybody believes Sammy would be stupid enough to, to spray paint her own name on another, on a rival team's school. And, you know, she and Marissa were wearing very distinctive outfits, which were easily, um, which easily identified them. It's like, Sammy and Marissa aren't that stupid. And it's like the principal doesn't remember any of the stuff that happened in previous books between Sammy and Heather. Because if he had been paying attention, he would know, wow, Sammy and Heather have publicly humiliated each other. They've gone to great lengths to humiliate each other in the past. It's like, maybe, maybe Sammy's telling the truth that Heather doesn't like her. Because Heather totally would go super far to frame Sammy for a crime in order to get Sammy kicked off the, the softball team. Now, fortunately, Heather's brother Casey comes up with the solution. Um... You know, he finds the evidence and he brings it in the middle of the game, but Coach Vince doesn't want to take a look at it. I actually really like the um, the other coach, Sammy's coach, because she basically quits. She's, she stands by Sammy and Marissa. It's like, hey, I'm not going to coach the team if you're not going to let them play. And, and then, well, she gets kicked off the team. And they, they end up losing the game. They end up having to forfeit the game because Heather was a crook and you know, committed crimes to get her way onto the team. And even just talking about spray painting as a crime, you'd feel like that would be more of the crime that would be appropriate for a book like this, if this, you know, this is truly a, a book intended for middle schoolers. I guess middle schoolers can handle gangster stuff, though. I don't, I don't know. It, it just it was a really dark and serious book, and I, that it felt like it was a bit too much for me. Um, Sammy made, it's just watching Sammy make terrible decision after terrible decision, and that was really bad. Although it was engaging to see the, the gang stuff and learn about it. Uh, the author did research. There's a thing on the dedication page, uh, thanking the various people she worked with in order to do research for the book. So, so that's good. That's good. Um... Really like that. I like the first third with the baby, but then the baby disappears part way through, and it gets replaced with Sammy throwing herself into danger for no reason. Like, yeah, and Sammy can't tell the truth to the police because she doesn't want them to find out about her living situation. There are a couple of deeper things like that, like um, comparing and contrasting Sammy and uh, Lena. Uh, Hudson says outright, it's like, well, you know, the baby doesn't have a mother. Um, because, you know, Lena's been kidnapped. It's like, Sammy, you don't have a mother. Is, is that the reason why you're trying to help the baby? You're just trying to save every person who doesn't have a mother? And uh, on a comparison between Sammy's mother and uh, Lena, because Lena's 16 years old and has a baby, well, uh, turns out Sammy's mom was 17 or 18 when she had Sammy. I did not know that. I guess you could have deduced that from the previous book. But mom lied about her age in the previous book, so I wasn't really sure how old she was. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's some deeper stuff in there, and it's definitely a good book. If you like the other Sammy Keys book, I would just like the other Sammy Keys books. But, yeah, this this one was a bit too dark and serious for me. You know, I, the baby stuff was fine. I liked the, uh, the Heather stuff. That was good. And I liked how that tied into the gang stuff. Cause like I said, officer Borsch teaches Sammy how to read graffiti. So I, I feel like that worked together really well, but in the end, it, it's just, you know, a bit too dark for my tastes and, uh, also draw, you know, Sammy making clever deductions at the end was, I, I didn't like that as much because I really couldn't follow. It felt like she was taking a bunch of different pieces from various places. I, I guess you really have to be playing, paying a bit more close attention than I was to uh, follow it. So, I don't know. Overall, I'd say I, probably like a six, six out of ten, I think, because there's it's like a third of the book. It's just like, oh, ow, stop being stupid, Sammy. Don't throw yourself in danger. So... That's it. That's my review for Sammy Keys and the Search for Snake Eyes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, sorry this review was kind of long, like 14 minutes. Um, 
I did not write this review out ahead of time, so that, that's why I have a tendency to babble a little bit in these Sammy Keys reviews.